I'm Tim Kittrow, and here to bring home the bacon are Big Ryan the Fat Guy. And the plugs get in next week, so I won't have to wear the hat anymore. What's up, YouTube? It's the NFL Picks Against the Spread for Week 11, Fat Guy 22-23 NFL season. We are losing. We have a losing record after our hot start, 71-73-5. and five. We still have this Monday nighter, though. It's still going on. We don't know, but Washington is looking good. So most likely we'll be one game below 500 as long as Washington can cover that 10.5 point spread for tonight's game. But nobody cares about any of that fat guy onto the Thursday night games, which is the Tennessee Titans at the Green Bay Packers. Packers minus 2.5 at home. 54% of early betters are on the Packers. And fat guy, I believe this line has actually pushed up to three oh, <laughs> as we started recording this. So uh, I think I know who you're going to go with at 2.5. Well, you took my steam. I was going to be like, I think there's closing line value on the Green Bay Packers. And then, well, clearly there is. I mean, contest pick minus two and a half. If I could bet real life at minus two and a half with good juice, I would take the Green Bay Packers because I think it will close at three. And as we're speaking, it's moving to three. I don't think it'll go to three and a half. The worst case scenario is probably three bad juice. Like that half point is such a big deal. Like it's, it can be upwards of 11%. It can be. It's not like every situation is different. Every situation is different, but it's that half point. The, the hook, as they call it, can really make all the difference. That being said, contest line, current line that we have on our uh, on our sheet, Green Bay minus two and a half. And it's uh, just over eight percent of games finish as uh, the home team winning by three over the last uh, seven hundred games or so. Fat guy on to the Sunday early games. Philadelphia Eagles at the Indianapolis Colts. <clears throat> Colts plus seven and a half at home. 51% of early betters are on Jeff Saturday's Colts. However, the Eagles are still playing right now. So some places don't even have a line out. This was one of the more favorable favorable lines for the Eagles. Who do you have? I, I, I We're still going to take the, the Colts here. I think this closes at at seven flat with bad juice on the Eagles. And we just talked about the hook. The hook on seven isn't so bad either. And think about when you're distributing this game, you know, it, Eagles by seven is probably the most common result. And so those micro edges, those add up tremendously over time, tremendously. So that hook is everything. We're going to take Indy. We're going to take the seven and a half points. And I think there's closing line value because it closes at, Philly minus seven. And you know what's funny, too, is is they base these lines on priors. So they have preseason expectations. They use a variety of metrics. Uh, the market pushes it in one way or another. However, though, this Philly-Washington game that we're recording during will have an effect on this line. And as we see it, it's in Washington's favor at the moment. So that will, you know, that's part of where my prognostication comes as far as where the closing line value would be in the plus seven and a half. And then the other interesting thing, I know you've seen this uh, prior weeks with these games, is that there are some books that leave these lines up for teams like Philly while they're playing, and during. those lines can shift and move. So find those types of books where you can make those bets during games because for sure this line might come down to seven even further, especially if uh, Philadelphia gets blown out or something bad happens. They're only down six at halftime, uh, but injury is even bigger, right? If Hertz is out, that could be a big difference. In Monumental. In fact, I under the next game, LA Rams at the New Orleans Saints. Saints minus three and a half at home. 43% of early betters are on New Orleans. Fat guy, who you got? I see I see value all over the place. Rams plus three and a half. I think that's the uh that's a play here. I think it closes at three. I think that hook is everything, and I think you should grab it if you can in real life and in the contest. That being said, like New Orleans, I find it really strange that like they don't kick the tires a little bit on Taysom Hill. Like you're it's it's kinda it reminds me of uh of Cleveland when they had Terrell Pryor as a receiver. Mm -hmm. it, it, who'd they start? Cody Kessler? If you actually wanted to win games, you start Terrell Pryor. You're going to have a ton of ugly ones, but you have the best athlete you know, out of the 22 players on the field. Some good things will happen eventually over a season. So this is one of those puzzling things. I'm not a Dennis Allen fan. I, I, I didn't mind him before when he was on the Raiders, but then when you look at the body of work and you look at some of the decision-making, pretty poor here, and I think you should start Taysom Hill I think you have a better chance at winning a game with Taysom Hill as your quarterback. 
That being said, Rams plus three and a half. Fat guy. On to the next game, which is the Chicago Bears traveling to Atlanta to take on the Falcons, who are three-point favorites at home. 17% of early betters are on the Falcons. So pretty much everyone and their grandma is on the Bears. Fat guy, who you got? Well, we're going to pile on with grandma on the Chicago Bears. Uh, this I actually think this number is equilibrium. Like, it just should be three with good juice on the bears like that's that's what i think it is i i gotta give a shout out to justin fields i've kind of poo-pooed him a little bit over the last two years this is some incredible performances like incredible this is like hall of fame it, you know if you're following from a fantasy perspective these are hall of fame performances from justin fields so just a shout out to justin fields and the chicago bears i like the direction they're heading and we're gonna take them in the contest plus three and in real life not at all. <laughs> Fat guy, on to the next game, which is the Washington Commanders traveling to Houston to take on the Texans, or plus two and a half at home. 21% of early betters are on the Texans. And just a caveat, Fat Guy, I was just listening uh, just before the half. Uh, one of the refs said uh, whatever, whatever on the Redskins, which I thought was pretty funny on the hot mic. But completely bypassing the Washington football team, but straight on to the Commanders. Fat Guy, forget all that. Who do you got? Well, we're going to lay the two and a half points. We're going to take the Washington Commanders, Redskins, what have it. Oh, football team. Football team was my favorite name out of all three. Uh, I think it's going to close at three. There is some value this week, and I think you're going to get closing line value in a variety of spots if you're able to pay a low juice by uh, shopping. Shopping is very key to making profit in the long term. So that being said, I think it will close at minus three, so we'll happily take the Washington Commanders minus two and a half. And that's another one of those games where the commanders are playing well tonight on, you know, 300,000 bets or so, according to uh, a site that we check. Um, but uh, who cares? On to the next game. New York Jets at the New England Patriots. Pats minus three and a half. 34% of early betters on the Pats. Fat guy, who you got? Well, we're going to be taking the New York Jets here. Uh, the hook is going to be a really, uh, it's a theme almost to this week. Three and a half. I think it closes. I it probably going to stay at three and a half bad juice for the Jets. But that does lend itself to the possibility that it could go down to three. And that hook is everything. So I think the Jets here, that's the way to go. Uh, that half point, like I said, is everything. And this spot, especially because it's a low total, this spot, what is the total, Big Rye? I don't have it in front of me. It is 39 <laughs> with uh, minus 39. 39 juice on the under. So like when the total is low, the points are valuable. It, it doesn't always reflect when you use a frequency approach. But over the very long term, it does matter, and the hook does matter. Three points is everything. That extra half point is everything. That's your edge. Like I, I was explaining to my brother in law today, he asked, he goes, "What like like what's an edge that you bet?" And one point seven percent, like that's a good edge. Like I'll happily take that all day. It's a volume business, ladies and gentlemen. But that being said, Jets plus three and a half. Fat guy, on to the next game, which is going to be a five-star entertainment. Detroit Lions at the New York Giants. Giants, three-and-a-half-point favorites at home. 65% of early betters are on the hot New York Giants. Fat guy, who you got? We're going to take the Lions. We're going to take the hook again. I told you it's going to be a theme. Now, something interesting. Was the Lions beating the Bears like an upset? I know it was only two-and-a-half-point spread, but like it felt like an upset. How it exciting, Dan too. Campbell's first road win as a Detroit Lion. Are you serious? I think so. I, th I think so. I think. They I feel like they beat the Arizona so last year. It might, it might be first road win of the year, but just really interesting stuff. So good on the Lions. I'm going to take this hook all day. I, I watched, or sorry, I watched. I read something on Twitter, too, that they have a, a luck metric, and the Giants have the highest... Uh, they've had the most favorable dicey situations go their way whereas the jacksonville jaguars had the opposite and when you think about it it kind of makes sense like how much different are the jags even of the falcons dare i say it uh how much different are they compared to the new york giants like we're talking a few plays here like six plays that could go either way and and it would totally reshape the landscape so the the, the giants aren't exactly their record looks like contenders, but I don't think they are. So I, I'm going to take the Lions. I take three and a half points, and I'm not sure where it's going to close. It's probably going to stay put, I think. Lions beat the Cardinals 30-12 to 12 at home 
on December 19, oh. 2021. The uh, other one is that they did tie, I believe, the Steelers. Yeah, 16-16 was a Ow. road tie last year. So uh, one tie last year, but this is the first win, I believe, on the road for Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions. Uh, at least since he's been the head coach. Carolina at the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens minus 13 at home. 53% of early betters are on the Ravens. Fat guy, who you got? It's a weird one. We're going to take Carolina Panthers. And Baker Mayfield, by the way, is the quarterback. I don't know how I feel about that as a 30-point dog. It's kind of interesting. Like I had a lot of money on the Arizona Cardinals uh, yesterday, and it was strange because you – like. For a cover perspective, you almost want Colt McCoy over Kyler Murray. And the market only found Kyler Murray a few percent better, which I found extremely strange. That being said, like as a 13-point dog, you're you're betting to cover a spread, not to win a game. Who would you rather have? PJ Walker or Baker Mayfield? It's an interesting, uh it's an interesting thought project. So we're just gonna hold her nose. We're gonna take Carolina. This is purely a contest pick. I don't have a mark in ink like one way or another, but I'm gonna be looking out for it. So Carolina plus thirteen. Next up, Cleveland Browns traveling to Buffalo to take on the Bills, who are eight and a half point favorites at home. Sixty one percent of early betters are on the Bills. Fat guy, you got a feeling that the prior results over the last week or two have affected this line. It feels like it should have been a ten and a half. You know what I mean? And it's not because like the the Bills are very good, obviously. I mean, they, yeah, they lost to Minnesota. By the way, that might have been the best football game I've ever watched in my entire life. I never liked the Bills-Chiefs games because the defense is just hopeless. I like a full complement, uh, uh, offense, defense, special teams, and that's what you got from uh, Bills-Minnesota. It was an absolute thriller, fantastic. Patrick Peterson for the win. That being said, I do think this that has negatively affected that result has negatively affected this negatively affected this point spread. That was so hard to get out. So I do think it should be a minus 10. So we'll take the perceived positive expected value. We'll take the bills minus eight and a half. Fat guy next up Raiders at the Broncos Broncos minus three at home. 62% of early betters are on the Broncos high uh preseason expectations for both teams they have not lived up to the hype Balter got in this poo poo bowl yeah we'll take the las vegas uh raiders because i think there actually is closing line value with that push on three and i think it's going to close at denver minus two and a half like that's really the crux of it like you can you can line it up any which way you like the closing line is so accurate and you be like oh it's x amount of points off we'll tr just just run an experiment monte carlo sim uh away home any way any way you slice it it's very hard like the closing line you're gonna lose long term regardless of what side you're gonna bet that's how it is it just is so the closing line i think will be denver minus two and a half so i think there's value on raiders plus three fat guy next up the cincinnati bengals travel to pittsburgh to take on the steelers who were four and a half point dogs at home 53 percent of early betters are on the Steelers, and if I'm not mistaken, this was supposed to be the Sunday night game, and it's been flexed to flexed. the midday game. Uh, so these teams not getting a lot of respect there from <laughs> NBC, I guess. And yeah, NBC. I, I mean, I guess it's more on the Steelers. Kenny Pickett's not doing it for anybody. That being said, I think it should be a minus five and a half, minus six. So I actually think there's a little bit of value on the Cincinnati Bengals. I think it's going to close. Minus five and a half bad juice uh, Bengals. That's my guess on where it's going to close. Um, just because I think I think the market's going to favor Cincinnati in this affair. Like it's not, I don't know, the sentiments are stronger on Cincinnati. And I, I do think that this number four and a half is a good number for them. So uh, in real life, more than likely, and most assuredly in the contest, Cincinnati Bengals minus four and a half. I'm peeking here at the live line. Washington Commanders minus three and a half against the Eagles. Right Whoa! Now. That must have happened. Whoa! Next up, Dallas Cowboys at the Minnesota Vikings. Vikings plus one at home. 60% of early betters are on the Vikings. In fact, guy, that game, the best, you know, the best football game you and I might have ever watched. Ever. Had to have affected this line. And the Packers beating the Cowboys had to affect this line. Who you got in this game? I don't know how Minnesota isn't favored. 
Like, I know it's fleeting. Like, minus one is nothing, but it's on the... I don't... Like, if you can get plus money, I, I it's... I, I don't see how you wouldn't do it. it. It's... I like Minnesota. I think they're better coached. I think they're a better team. Give me the Minnesota Vikings to win this game. And I, I, I'm really puzzled. Like, I think this should be Minnesota minus two and a half. I don't know why they're dogs right now. Even if you get it even money, I, I think it's a really good play. I like Minnesota in real life, and I like them in the contest. Yeah, currently Minnesota a pick em on the money line. Sunday night football, Kansas City Chiefs at the LA Chargers. Chargers plus six and a half at home. 56% of early betters are on the Chargers. Fat guy, who you got? Uh, I, I like the Chiefs, and I think there's going to be closing line value. And I'm predicating a lot of this uh, belief on the Chargers-San Francisco line movement from last week. It went from six and a half all the way, would it close at eight and a half? Eight and I think half. you're going to see a similar type movement. And think about it. It's the key number of seven. Is Six actually is a very key number, but seven is equally as it's actually more so slightly better the number seven so if i'm laying six and a half i get seven in my pocket and eight because i think it's going to close at eight and a half chiefs minus six and a half with i th- i actually think there's going to be closing line value and then monday night football san francisco at the arizona cardinals cardinals plus seven and a half point underdogs at home 36 percent of early betters are on the cards fat guy who you got i don't really like this game in terms of uh the market like i'm not I just don't see it going down to six and a half. I, I think it's going to go up to like nine, but like, I don't know how much value there is. And I don't feel strongly that's going to shift in that direction that drastically. I just don't, I don't have like a strong beat on it, as they say. So we're going to take San Francisco. We're going to lay seven and a half points. It's purely a contest pick. We're flying through it today. We're flying through it. We got some good cadence. I didn't want to touch on one thing though. I didn't respond to it, but someone commented that I said the Seahawks uh, offense is inefficient. Uh, and but then they pointed out that they won by multiple touchdowns over multiple games. Yeah, scoring points and being efficient to close out a game isn't the same thing. You don't want to score quickly. You want to score slowly. They only took a minute off the clock against Arizona. What was it? The week before last? Like, one minute. You need two, three first downs, and they've won the game, but instead they score a touchdown. It's like taking a win probability from... 99.999 to what 93 like it's it, like that value does matter and there is examples of it real world examples nick chubb he ran in for a touchdown browns are up 13 against the new york jets how could joe flacco come back they did in classic browns fashion 14 points they go from what uh they probably lost five percent of win probability because nick chubb didn't go down so this stuff does matter Seahawks are inefficient. I know that's not the game, but I had to touch on this before we went on to the next segment. All right, fat guy, on to the lightning round. Titans, Packers. Packers. Eagles, Colts. Colts with a hook. Rams, Saints. Rams with a hook. Bears, Falcons. Bears. Commanders, Texans. Closing line value, Commanders. Jets, Pats. Meet the Jets. Lions at the Giants. The Lions plus three and a half. Panthers, Ravens. I don't care, Carolina. Browns, Bills. Buffalo minus eight and a half. Raiders, Broncos. Raiders plus three. Bengals, Steelers. Cincinnati minus four and a half. Cowboys at the Vikings. Vikings plus one. Just taking the money line. Let's go. Plus money. Chiefs, Chargers. Chiefs minus six and a half. And Monday night, Niners at the Cards. Niners minus seven and a half. Congratulations to Top G Triple Eight for going nine three and one against the spread. It's looking like ten three and one because the Washington Commanders are currently minus two and a half, which is a lot better than the plus ten and a half you took in the contest. Uh, but either way, no matter the result, Monday night, Top G, you are the winner for the picks against the spread for Week Ten. Fat guy, we also have Untouchable J and uh, G A Y for Fat Guy. Uh, all uh, my doing friend very, Stewart. very well this week. Call I gotta give a plug. To Stu. And Stewie, then as well, I miss Mad you, buddy. Capper, I'll give you a call next week. Madcapper, Mickey, Wook Dog, Mike J, all seven, five, and one against the spread. Congrats to you guys for all being uh, positive this week 
ATS. And then the overall leaderboard, still a huge gap here. CEO Eric Hayden, 87 wins in 144 tries. On taking fuego. Those five draws. Still above 60%. We'll see if he can keep this up for the rest really of hard. the season. Fat guy, time for the JS715. Name of the week, honorable mentions. I can't get into the backstory, but this is one of my favorite names of the year is Touch DNA. That's pretty funny. Uh, with the black rack, black with the black background, you look like Luke and Chewbacca going through hyperspeed. Yeah, yeah, it does look like that. Who cares about red versus blue? Kirk Thuggins. Down goes Skycam. Down goes Skycam. Ink <laughs> in the bottle. You stink. 1984. Earth say it ain't so. And cryptically, five three one five eight zero zero eight. Thanks, Stu. I still don't get it. This is the JS715 name of the week. Whoa, kaboom! From the island nation of Korea. I sell Kias. The guy who, who submitted this kind of has a good pulse. He has a good beat on what our humor is. And that is particularly one of my favorite lines from Eastbound and Down. So, from the island nation of Korea. Uh, thank you guys uh, to our channel members, the 10 of you. You guys keep us afloat over here. Have Big Ryan, the fat guy. So we really appreciate it. Fat guy has some cool stuff right now. So if you have a uh, parlay or teaser card where you get the lines, you know, Tuesday and you can bet those on Sunday, I would highly suggest joining the Discord. I can beat them. I the can beat them. It's, uh, it's doable. I know how to do it. I have the tools. I am currently doing it, and I am up very handsomely this year so far. A steal for $5 a month. I'm telling you, it's kind of ridiculous. Make your picks against the spread for week 11 at BigRyanTheFatGuy.com. Fat Guy, that is it. In the books, we got 14 games this week. What does that mean? Four teams on by. Uh, as always, where where's the value? What line here do you see where you're just like, I can't believe this line, or... The positive expected value is is greater than the difference that people are going to make up with that juice. I, I think Washington is going to shoot up. Like this is going to have this prior this this game against Philadelphia. I I think if you can get it two and a half, I think it's going to shoot up. It could even go to three and a half now. That I think because like if you decisively beat an undefeated team, it shouldn't matter because it's just you know it's an outlier result, right? But like people carry weight on that, and it carries. I don't know. Hope, hope is a terrible thing to bet on. That being said, I think you're gonna get a new good number at Washington minus two and a half. And carrying all that weight, we will say good night. Good luck for your picks in Week Eleven. <laughs> <laughs>